Hey guys, how's everybody? Um, so I'm trying to catch up with what you guys are wanting to see and um, this is my next question. So a um, 770G user uh, that I've been talking with a lot on uh, Facebook through my um, uh, Just the Diabetic Facebook page um, has asked me about uh, temp target and kind of what temp target is and how it works and in kind of researching this i feel that temp target could get confused with temp basil um so i decided to do the video together on both of those subjects um and kind of see if that kind of answers his questions or maybe some of your guys's questions so when i hear temp target or temp basil the first thought that comes to mind is something that i would use for exercise or um, when i'm having a higher activity than, than normal that could result in a low and i'm trying to prevent that so in manual mode temp basil allows the user to to reduce their basal rate down to 0%, I believe, and all the way up to 200%. Um, so what that means is if I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to work out and I'm going to be there for a couple of hours and I don't want my sugar to get low, I want it to stay high, I can reduce my basal, let's say 50%, and over that time period that I specify, two or three hours or maybe longer, I will get that temporary basal rate to try to keep my sugars at a safe level for me while I'm doing that activity. So I, it is often used um, for activities, sports, stuff like that to kind of reduce the insulin usage and keep the pump user from going low. Um, I most of the time see it related to an activity, but since it also goes up to 200%, it could be used for something else. So a good example would be, let's say you're going to get a steroid shot and your sugars have been running slightly higher because of that. You could up it by a percentage. Let's say you need 125% of your normal basal rate to have normal blood sugars for that. So you can keep extending the temp basal for a couple of hours or I'm going to say a day to keep your sugars within range. And then once your sugars start to come down, you can go back to your normal basal rates. Um, I think sometimes we focus on exercise and stuff like that for these two features when in all reality, they most likely can be used for um, other areas to help benefit us. Sorry, I'm doing sensor change and my pump is going off on my phone. So, I think um, that could be beneficial for uh, a lot of people if you kind of think outside the box and think of how it can benefit you. So now we're going to hop over to temp target. Temp target is only available in auto mode and temp basal is only available in manual mode. So they're kind of separate, but they kind of do the same thing. So in auto mode, your blood sugar the pump is trying to target a blood glucose level of around 120. Um, forgive me for you guys that are watching um, outside of the U.S. I'm not 100% sure what it targets, the exact level there. I know it's the same, but I don't know the conversion to the method that you guys use. So I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, auto mode typically targets 120. But if you're going to do an activity or you're going to do something that could cause auto mode to lower your sugar faster than you want or per cause a low faster than auto mode can correct, you can do a temp target. And what that does is that raises your target blood glucose from 120 to 150. And in doing that, auto mode is not as aggressive to try to maintain that 120. It lets you kind of come up to about 150. The side effect to that though is you know, auto mode's target is kind to be the middleman. So if you raise your glucose up to or your value up to 150, you could potentially see some higher numbers. That could be the side effect of doing this. But if you're doing it while you're having activities, um, the pump is trying to target 150 and your blood sugar might be down where it's supposed to be around 120 or a little lower, um, but still above 100 to prevent you from going low while you're doing those activities. This particular user um, brought to my attention that 
he often has t uh, problems that when he drinks beer, um, his sugar bottoms out. Um, he's not really sure why it does that, but it's just something that kind of affects him differently. Um, I'm not much of a beer drinker, so I don't have experience with beer. Um, we did kind of talk about what I kind of do if I do drink an alcoholic beverage and how I kind of manage it. Um, but for him, he was kind of asking, could he use the temp target? Um, I personally don't see an issue with it. Um, like I say in all of my videos, when we're talking about stuff with managing your diabetes, please consult your care team, whether it be your Medtronic trainer, your endocrinologist, um, and see what they say. Um, but I don't see an issue with it. I think that if he knows he's going to be drinking. Um, he starts his temp target a little earlier to give his glucose time to rise, and he does that while he's drinking, and then maybe for an hour or two after, and then puts his pump back in normal auto mode. I don't see an issue with it. It could be a safer thing for him to prevent his sugars from going low. I think that as diabetics, you know, we have to think that, oh, our pumps are made for one size fits all, and sometimes we think that our diabetes is that way when that's not the case. Um, I was talking with another diabetic who I work with. She is on the Omnipod and the Dexcom. And um, I was just kind of touching base with her, kind of seeing how how um, much insulin she uses just to kind of compare with me. Um, you know, there's a little bit of age difference and stuff like that. We are different and we do require different things. Um, but I also want everybody to know too that you can kind of think outside the box a little bit to find what best works for you and what provides the best control for you um and there are some things that i have heard others do that i think i didn't th think about that um that's very smart and honestly there's some things that i've tried um like you know, uh, somebody recommended to me, he removes the adhesive on his sensor before um, he sticks it on him. Uh, so the adhesive that would be underneath this clamshell part, he removes it and then has the sensor in the starter and applies it so that way he's not trying to remove it one-handed. I've tried that. Honestly, it works. I get it. Sometimes this little, uh, I call it a little tail, but sometimes this part gets taped to my inserter and it provides an issue, but it seems easier and it's not that big of a deal for me. I think that us providing tips and tricks for each other um, is beneficial. And I know some of you are probably sitting there thinking, Justin, why is your sensor on your arm without your transmitter? Um, I knew that my sight change was going to happen today, and I had time this morning. I went ahead and put my sensor on, and the transmitter's charging. It's probably through charging now. I'm going to pop it off, stick it on here, and hopefully, since it's been sitting, um, that interstitial fluid's been able to touch the uh, part of the sensor, my warm-up will be sh a little shorter. Um, I know some people that often have... Uh, uh, bad first days with their sensor, marinate, um, that's what they call it, marinating. Um, they'll insert their sensor 24 hours early and let it marinate in their body to um, kind of, you know, absorb that interstitial fluid and get ready. And then they start their new sensor and that fixes their problems. Um, if you do marinate, this doesn't need to get wet. So if you have an older transmitter, from an older Medtronic pump, they will fit on. Just pop that sucker on there to kind of keep the waterproof seal on it. Um, that way you can take your shower and bathe. Um, but it's something that you guys could do and you can try. So if you have any uh, questions about anything uh, with your pump and uh, you kind of want me to dig in on it or experiment and see if I have the same uh, results that you do, let me know. Uh, drop a comment down below or shoot me a direct message on my Facebook page, Justin the Diabetic, and I'll be happy to discuss things with you and kind of see if I experience the same thing. If you like the video and you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. That helps YouTube's algorithm share the videos to where others can see. Um, that's all I'm trying to do is just provide some tips and tricks for everybody and um, hopefully pay it forward and teach you guys a couple things for you guys to share with others. So um, if you have any questions, don't 
hesitate to reach out to me. I enjoy the interaction with you guys, and I will see you next time. You guys have a great day.